Hi, in this lecture, we're going to talk about using 3D posing figures to assist us in drawing figures. That would be human figures in this case. We've all seen them. In fact, let me go over to Amazon, and here we can ex see an example of a wooden posing figure. Artists use them to get poses and use that as a reference to draw from. And in fact, one of the most complicated aspects of drawing is getting hands right. You can see these are just muffiny kind of hands here on the drawing figure. That's why you can actually buy left and right hands to pose the hands the way that you'd like before drawing them. Hands are very difficult to draw. I'm going to show you how in Clip Studio Paint that you can actually set up digital versions of these posing dummies and either put them to the side and draw using them as a reference or draw directly over them. So let's get right to it. Here I am in Clip Studio Paint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to File and I'm going to create a new image. Now right now it doesn't matter what illustration we're using. We'll just go with a standard illustration, whatever size is fine. And the first thing that I always like to do whenever I get a sheet of paper is go up to View, Fit to Navigator, which blows it up into the Navigator screen size. Okay, now, rather than just jumping into drawing, let's say we have a woman that we'd like to draw in a particular pose and from a particular angle. And we're trying to envision this in our head and we might start drawing some pencil strokes. But first, this is what I propose. If you go over to the far right, this is the, these are the tabs that control what shows up here in this panel. Now we've got it on the navigator panel up on top. There's the layers panel where we can see what layers we have. Here I am drawing on a raster layer. Don't worry about that for now. But then I can go down to this thing called materials. Now this is interesting. These are all things that I can pull in either as references or to actually build my scene. And what we're interested in for reference is the human figure. So if I open up the 3D tab here on my materials, I can see that I have body type. Let's click on body type. And I have two options here for body type. I have a 3D drawing doll for a male or a female. Let's use a female. And all I got to do is left click on it, drag it out onto the page, and release. And here I have my drawing figure. Now, isn't this neat? Already you're beginning to see the possibilities, I bet, of drawing from this figure just like you would from a wooden mannequin. Now hold on to your hats because it gets really neat. And I'm just going to keep piling on the neatness here until you're totally overwhelmed and impressed. First, this is just a standard female figure. Now I can rotate around it and I can see the figure from various angles here just by grabbing anywhere outside the figure and pulling things around. I also have these controls up here that I'm going to talk about in a bit. But first I want to talk about what you can do with the figure. If you don't want a standard figure, come down here and click on this adjust body shape and size. Now this is cool. Notice this square is right in the middle between slim and overweight and up and down kid and sensual. I can make this woman more sensual. In other words, her breasts and so on get larger, so do her legs. And by the way, if I pull down sensual on a male, they get very bulked up and, and very mm, to testosterone-y. So I can go slim to make her very skinny, or I can make her very overweight. So here's how I pick the body size. I can make it kid-like, and then I can zoom in and out here with this bar. So isn't that cool? That's how you can create the mannequin of the shape that you'd like. And in fact, it gets even better. Here on the end, I can adjust each of the bones. For instance, if the head length is not long enough, I can make her head longer. Notice how the head gets longer and shorter as I pull this dial. I can make her head wider. I can give her a gigantic head, basically. And I can go all the way down through all these things, her neck, her torso, her arms. I can change the length of any of those. So I can make a mannequin for basically any body shape. Now let's go look at the camera poses and how we can change this figure around. These buttons up here in the upper left hand corner of the figure. The first one rotates where the camera looks. So if I go up to that button and I click and I start pulling around, it moves the camera angle. The second, you can see up, down, left, right, it moves the camera and it's 
because the camera is in the middle of the icon, that's what it's talking about. Here, zoom the camera in and out. Now these control the object. So here I can move the object up and down. She goes down through the floor if I pull her down. I can rotate her forward and backward or to either side. So I can pick any kind of angle or direction that I want to see her from. Now, ready for the next cool feature of this? Notice as I scroll over the body, body parts become red. These are parts at which I can grab the figure and I can adjust where that body part is. Now also notice that this program uses kinetic energy. In other words, if I pull on the arm, her body gets pulled too. So the body reacts to what I'm doing to the pose. And if I want to move this arm down too, I can move that over here. I can have her bending forward. I can have her head up and looking at me somewhat and the body kind of moves to replicate that. Let's move her leg out. Let's see about bending her leg up in some interesting position. Now notice also as I pick these things, this uh, control mechanism shows up here. This is the bend of the knee because the knee only bends in one direction. If I pick an arm, I should get a control mechanism. Oh, here we go. Something that bends. There we go. I double click on here and once again I'm getting the bend operation. So you'll get these little globes that allow you to control in which way x y and z the joint changes now this is a somewhat awkward pose that i've chosen and it can take a while to get a pose exactly right so here's the next neat feature of posing these 3d figures i can come down to poses and under that i have entire body now if i click on entire body look at all of these poses that i have for her going down stairs relaxing walking Here's thinking, let's try that. And all I've got to do is grab the pose and drag it over to the figure. And now she's thinking. Quickly, I can move directly to that pose and then I can modify it. I can pull her arms out and her shoulder over this way, loosen her up a little bit. I can have her up and looking more at some figure. I can uh, do anything that I want to this figure and then once again, change the position of the view. Now, because hands are so complicated, they actually have their own posing options. If I go to hand here and I see, uh, let's get a dramatic hand. Here I've got hands shaking and doing all kinds of things. Now, notice also that there are tags for elements down here. If I go to hold, these are all the hand positions that are holding something. Okay, and I can unremove that. So as you see these tags down here as you're picking body shapes and stuff, consider clicking on them to reduce the number of options you have down to a category, like holding positions and stuff. Now let's give her a flat hand. And we'll just drag that over to her hand and we'll release it. Now notice both hands went flat. That's, that's interesting. That actually shouldn't have happened. Well, anyway. That's the way that you control the hand posture. Now, if you want to just do a hand, let's say you're just drawing a hand, go ahead and pull the hand out, get it in some posture that you would like to get to that hand. If we just wanted to draw the hand, or let's say we wanted to draw this open hand here, you just go ahead and zoom the camera in as close as you can and then use these things to move the camera around until you have the hand in the position that you'd like and start drawing from it. So I can use actual body parts as models. Let's go ahead and we'll move out to show the entire model here. There she is. And let's give her a more natural pose, shall we, for the entire body. Uh, we'll have her walking down the stairs. There we go. Now, I pick a position that I'd like to see this subject from, and I go ahead and I zoom the camera in until she fills the frame. Now I want to show you some more neat tricks for setting up the model. 
they have to do with these options over here. Now, if I pick this square box as my tool, this is the object operation tool, and I select object, I can go over and click on an object, which is her, basically. And down here, the tool properties show up. Notice this says 3D drawing doll. It's really the only object on the plane, so I'm sure it's the only thing that ever shows up. Now, I don't know what these two options do, but check this out down here under 3D Drawing Figure. Okay, I have kind of this flat, uninteresting look at her from above. If I add perspective by pulling this dial up, notice how the perspective on her changes. It makes the upper part larger and pulls back and makes the lower part smaller. So you get real perspective. So there we have some perspective going on this character. Now next, check this out. We go for the light source and say, yeah, turn it on. Now we have a shaded figure. And if I open up the light source tab here by clicking on the little plus sign, I can actually change the source of my light. So I can put her mostly in shadow. I can pull the light way over here to the side and light her up really well. Now here's my posing figure. Once again, I get it in the middle. And let's say this is what I want to draw. I just then go to my layers. Here I have my drawing dummy on a particular layer. I pull my pencil layer or my raster layer up above the drawing layer. And now anything that I draw will show up on top of this drawing dummy. So I can draw along the edge and, and get the idea of the drawing dummy and the shape of it as I pull this pencil around and highlight her. And then I can wink the little eye here and make the drawing dummy disappear and see what I'm drawing. Isn't this the ultimate way to draw? The other option that I've got, of course, is to move the drawing dummy out of the way and draw to her side using her as a reference and not exactly trace. Now I can actually bring in multiple characters by just going back here again, picking a body type, let's say this time a, a male, and pulling that male into here. I then go ahead and position this character. Let's say I don't want the arms up, let's position the entire body with a nice walk, so they're actually walking side by side. It looks like this person's a little shorter. Maybe I need to pull them up or something. And that's the way that you pose multiple figures. Now, the final thing that I want to point out is that you can actually come into the materials and under 3D figures, you have all kinds of small objects you can put in their hands. You have backgrounds that you can apply, but you also have actual characters here. They're kind of manga characters. You have six of them. And if you're happy with just six characters, you don't need to draw anything. And there we have 3D posing figures. So let me go through and one more time highlight how to go ahead and use posing figures. You begin by going to the materials. It's the bottom tab on the far right. And here you pick body type and pull in either a fee female or a male body. It will expand. The next thing that I would recommend doing is on a rough basis, go ahead and grab a pose for the entire body and the hands if those are important to your scene. Here's a person being seized by the collar. That's kind of interesting. And then position your camera for what you would like. Zoom it in and out as you'd like to get the figure where you'd like. Go down to the 3D drawing doll options and play with perspective to get what you want. Definitely turn on a light if shading and stuff is something that's important to you that you want to pull from your doll. And manipulate the light source by hitting the plus here and changing that around. Once you have everything posed and you have your multiple figures in there, then it's time to draw. And that's what we'll be talking about in the next lecture. I'll see you there.